Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Three Houses. Let's finish up this paralog and see what we get. I cannot tell you how grateful we are for your assistance. I don't know what would have happened if not for you. And thanks to you. Probably would have died. The magic hammer crusher. The hero's relic of House Dominic. My brother would not surrender such a relic without a fight. I hope you understand. Of course. House Dominic is one of the ten great bloodlines. Yet within the kingdom, we are mere feudal lords. With the empire growing in strength, Dominic must kneel. To do otherwise would be suicide. The western lords and other rulers are in the same situation. They all comply, albeit reluctantly. If we defeat the empire, I hope the kingdom will rise once more. Under the banner of a legitimate king. I hope so too. That's why we can't give up. That That's why we shouldn't give up. We will require your help. I hope we can continue depending on you. You count me. Don't worry. You won't make me do all of the hard work by yourself. I'll give it my all too. Speaking of, I'm gonna get straight to training. Well, they're barrel this time, at least. Look after my daughter as well. We got Crusher! Except we're never gonna use it. And for the rest of the time frame, let's just keep using, uh, little agitating battles. Rare monster sighting. Guess what? We're not doing that. Also, what is on my shirt? Oh, it's water. I spilled on it. I spilled a little bit of water on my shirt. I'm smart. Okay, well, Gilbert, you're not part of the main team. Flane, you are. And everything else is in order. Okay, cool. A little more time, I guess, with them. Uh, Annette, do you have another? No, you do not. Okay, well, I mean, Gilbert isn't in the party, so let's put Gilbert on Annette. We'll put you with, uh, we'll put Ignatz on, uh, Mercedes. There we go. I think we need to fix a couple things up, so let's just do a quick overhaul. Uh, not really. I say not really, and then I look again, and I'm like, oh, wait, no. And that's it. Cool. So, Crusher, a hero relic, uh, Crest Dominique. A magical weapon Crest Bearers can use, uh, use dust. <coughs> cool. Not using that. And Black Pearl, Crisis Charm. <coughs> Don't need it. And there we go. <coughs> uh, Flane will keep you in the back and we'll put the more offensive people in front. I apologize. Okay. Thunder is a good spell to use. Get one down. Uh, for you to take your time. I'll 
do my best. Silence the mages, because we definitely don't need those messing us all over. Dimitri, yeah. All talk and no action. Onward. Lane, dance for Dimitri. <laughs> Let's get her done. Oh, you're going to see a lot of people in the Eternal Flames, Dimitri. Ready when you are. If you like it or not. It is done. Onward. Okay, 47, or 37. I must continue my training. And not so much a great level up. Great. Ooh, we'll put the professor in kind of a hot spot, and that's really about it. All, all I'm gonna be risking. At your service. And let's see how this plays out. Hopefully, not horrendously. Is that it? Well, it's not horrendous yet. Okay, Felix, you you prove that you're the manliest man. One to remember. Felix, you got I fight in really good level up, actually. Oh no! Oh, I feel kind of bad for you now. Kinda, I have remotely. And we can use the bow or we can just use fire. I wonder what I'm gonna use. Burn until we meet again. Nice form. Okay, Felix. Uh let's cause a little mayhem. Let's cause a little mayhem towards the Yeah, the standard thief over here. And that's what I'm talking about. Ash, you got good magic resistance and like all kind of resistance. That's a good trade off. It was the only way. Level forty. Without power, who can you protect? Yikes, that's a good level up. I was kind of just stall the train out here for a bit. Let's move you up. Let's do some sabotaging. It's a sabot sabotage. It's the deluge. Oh, I messed that up. Silence to get one guy out of our way. And then just to move uh, Marianne ahead and cause a little bit more mayhem. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Goodbye. I won, didn't I? Yes, you did. Sparkling shimmers and splendors. Okay, how are we going to pr approach this now? Oh, you're not going to do that much damage. You're also going to get critted. What did I say? What did I just say? It was meant to be. Thanks, Felix. That might hurt. But that would hurt more.
Yeah, I don't think so. Well, flame. Actually, uh, Annette, can you not move? Great, not enough. Sylvain, play healer. Oh, not items. Heal. And let's have Dimitri come in. Dimitri to the rescue! Whoop boom! Too weak for this world. I'm glad I can count on you. Hey, we got some meat that we can cook now. I don't feel like you got a levels. You got MVP. MVP Felix! Yeah, yeah, just not connect me, that's fine. And for more meat, battle on the border. Load, damn it. <laughs> Thank you. So, I don't know why I checked you. I want to check Flane. Yes! Flane has uh, the max thing. So, for the sake of convenience, let's get Felix and Sedith. And we'll get. Uh, well, Marianne, or Mercedes is done. Actually, not entirely. Let's put Constance on Mercedes. Mercedes, you will get Constance. And then, I guess, Flane, Manuela. That works for now. Let's just begin it, because it's going to be over before you know it. A four on for you. Goddess, forgive me. I'm your girl. I'll cut through. A four on for you. All right, sorry, Railer Thunder. Uh, Dimitri, you're going in, instead of uh, Annette. Violet, you're gonna come in and almost get destroyed, well, it's like. So, in that case, we'll put I'd be Ash over here. Hey, look, I got an axe. Hey, you got your fist. I won't fall to you. Uh, yep. Okay, there's no one behind us. Uh, no, keep it, keep it in the back. And that, you can be a healer. Violet, you go over here for support. Mercedes, you're the, uh, yeah, Mercedes, you're the healer. Marianne, you'll get another turn. <laughs> Wanted to move up a bit. What's the plan? And Sylvain, you're just gonna go over here. You're going to be over here. Sure about that, buddy? Sure that's the best move for you? Okay. Next up is Ash. Gets hit. But he definitely gets to take out people. It's my duty. He might not as do he might not dodge well, but he definitely knows how to kill. There's another one. Uh, 
Huh. Yeah, the first time we get to see a crit, I think. It must be so. Does a little air flip and just slashes. That's always so cool to me. The, the fact that he slashes. Okay, well, healing time. And time to bolster our forces by pushing ahead. Don't struggle between these holy chains. Reach level 40. Got a really good level up. Let's just break the order in a bit. It's my duty. <clears throat> Eh, I'll just push him off a bit. Oh, this is gonna work way too well. I aim for greatness. Just these three people alone is gonna make the game so nice and easy. Attack. Sure, him with a Thoron. And a crit. Didn't really need to get the crit, but okay. Well done. Heal. That's all you're gonna be good for. There we go. Marianne, you're gonna get pretty much butt kiss all. This works. We're not down and out. I remotely, because you guys are trying to fight us with bare fists. At best. Okay, pushing all up just for a last onslaught. To the enemy. Obliterate them! <laughs> okay, does he actually deal? Oh, he did a little twirl and then flip. B plus of axes, which got you nothing. And oh, we can't end it yet. Oh crap, we can't end it yet. Well, in that case, let's try to do something random. Draw back, I don't even need that. And Felix, not even remotely close. No one's getting close. And the worst part is, it's gonna end this turn, anyways. If we get that uh, spirit over there, that'd be great. Yep, we can. Okay, right, cool. I'm happy. Well, you are so gone. So what? Stronger, faster, never enough. That's still really good, Felix. Haven't withered away just yet. I got some money and more meat. Three turns. That's all it took. Okay. So before the mission, we got a support break, and then we pretty much got nothing else. Besides the mission's end itself. The chapter's end, rather. I could words. The Amiibo Gazebo.
Don't mind me. Uh, this is going to feel a lot longer than it is. Sorry. It's Gilbert's birthday. You get flowers. Last conversation before the mission. You're wrong. It's not like that, Glenn. I swear it. Any love I once had for my stepsister has been tossed aside. Only hatred remains. If I could tear that woman to shreds right this very moment, I would. I don't care if she's the Emperor. It's no different than killing anyone else. So I beg you, all of you, do not worry about my resolve. Please, Father, and you too, Stepmother, do not gaze at me with that look in your eyes. I will bring you her head soon, and when I do, you may finally rest in peace. I know it. Yes, I know it. For the love of God, Dimitri. Uh, what's troubling you? Come on. What do you want? Everyone's worried about you. I see. We should make haste and prepare to move out at once. I must kill her. As soon as possible. We gotta prepare first. We have no time to leisurely set up camp. If I must, I will go by myself. Pardon the interruption. We must prepare a counterattack at once. The Imperial Army has caught wind of our position. It would seem they were patrolling this place after all. The Imperial Army, is it? Well, well. <laughs> Your Highness. I ask that you please refrain from reckless behavior in battle. It would seem the report that the Knights of Cyrus have returned was accurate. This is going to take some effort. Brother, I heard a rumor that there is a vicious murderer among our enemies. Well, who knows if there's any truth to it? Though I admit we have lost some soldiers recently. Whether he's among them or not, taking on the Knights of Cyrus is extremely dangerous. You're not ready for the front lines, Flesh. Stay in the back and support us from there. Understood? No! I want to stay with you! I have to- I need you to understand, Flesh. I will come back, I promise. Uh -huh. I trust you, brother. Please, be safe. He's not gonna be safe. Prepare to attack! Definitely not Dimitri in the way he is. I gotta learn how to turn that connection thing off if I can help it. It's just until my internet gets like a little better with connecting. Can I turn off internet mode in the options? I can't. Go. Cool. Oh, but I don't want to turn that off. Well, I mean, if I have to, I kind of have to. See if it actually uh, stays connected. Yeah, I guess for our first, for our first little bit, we're gonna have to turn that off because it's not gonna connect properly. Yeah, that's what I thought. Just force it off right now. 
So, we got an entire huge support break coming up, so let's get right to it. This video might go for a bit extra. Hey, Felix. I'm glad you're safe. You irresponsible fool! Protecting me like that? You're so weak, and yet you always... always... Look, it doesn't matter. As long as you're safe, you can go on living while I... Stop kidding around! You're not going to die. I won't let you. <laughs> nah, I won't die on you. I promise. You think something like this could kill me? No way. A little magic will take care of the wound. Some bed rest, then I'm good to go out and do it all over again. So vain. That is true. Oh, come on. That was funny. It's not like you to be so concerned. You really are a fool. The biggest in all of Fodlin. I thought something was off. There's no way you could die from such a small cut. You're so reckless and inattentive. I thought this might be divine punishment. Hey, that's not nice. You should be thanking me. I am grateful. You've been doing this since we were children. Constantly fooling around, but then showing up and helping when we really need you. I'll admit, seeing that smile on your face, I almost want to give you a hug. Almost. A hug? Did you get hit on the head? Come on. Tell me you want to hug me again. I liked it. Savane, don't push your luck. You half-wit. You're obviously fine, so I'll leave now. You know how we grew up together? <sighs> obviously. Do you remember the promise we made when we were kids? About sticking together? Until we die together? I remember. Well, I'm really not trying to get myself killed before you. You know that, right? I know. I know. But I'm tired of these close calls. You have to stop fooling around. Take your training more seriously. I keep him safe. Please, but I'm not going down with you. Okay, I get it. Once I've healed, I'll get my act together. <laughs> then I hope you have a speedy recovery. Sylvain, thank you. That's what friends are for, Felix. Okay, Sylvain and... Or, Sylvain. Felix and uh, set up for next, and then uh, oh, Flame Flast. Training alone again. Spying on me again, I see. It is not my intention to spy. I am merely concerned about you. I do not think you have been keeping your friends at a distance because you dislike them personally. Rather, I think what bothers you is their concept of proper knighthood. Is that not so? <laughs> you really have been watching me closely. You are correct. I don't understand why they revere knighthood. I won't be friends with anyone who believes in that nonsense. Do you feel that way because of what happened in the tragedy of Dusker? I have heard the story. Your brother was one of the royal knights. He gave his life to defend the prince. My brother was doing his job. My father is the real problem. When my brother's armor was brought back to the castle, do you know what he said? He died like a true knight. Chivalry begets the worship and glorification of death. Am I alone in finding that grotesque? <laughs> Not really. You'll excommunicate me for blaspheming like this. Not at all. I am not a knight, so I have no intentions of lecturing you about chivalry. So long as one's conduct is consistent with the teachings of the goddess, it is up to the individual to decide right from wrong. In that case, I'd like you to formally pardon me for not having friends. You require no such pardon. This is merely advice from an old man to a younger one. As unwavering as your convictions may be, the others also feel strongly about their beliefs. If you hate all those whose beliefs are different from yours, you will hate everyone eventually. People with exactly the same beliefs as you simply do not exist. Exactly. You do not have to change your beliefs, of course. 
But you do have to accept that others feel differently. That is my advice to you. I will speak no more of it. Seven. Can I ask one thing? Why are you going out of your way to tell me this? Why bother with me at all? Because I trust you. Now that I've heard what you have to say, I trust you even more. I am also a rather eccentric person. I thought you and I might get along. I see. You've gone to so much trouble. I may have to start making an effort as well. Good. Do not take this the wrong way, but... I hope you will surpass my expectations. That's really sweet. I like that one. And then it is Flane, the last one. With Felix at least. You. What is it now? Do not fret. I have not come to ask you to chop wood. I have other things to speak up with you. You said that for one to live, they must also be prepared to kill. And this again. Yes, that's what I said. You still have a problem with that? No, I do not have a problem with it at all. I simply want you to live too. Oh, okay. Then I'll get back to my train. Excuse me, I am not finished yet. During this time of war, you must wield your sword to ensure your own life. If that is the case, then it follows that we should bring an end to this war. To end the war, you'd have to kill more people. Perhaps that is true. But once all this... I mean, Flame's probably covered in blood at this point. To kill, only to live. Is that not so? That's pure fantasy. But if it came to pass, there would be no place for me. What would I do? I was raised to swing a sword. That's all I know. In a world without strife, warriors like me would be lost souls. And it's tragic in a way. We fight to bring peace, and then, if we achieve it, we lose our purpose. I do not think that is anything you should worry yourself over. If the war ends and peace reigns, I shall be sure to have plenty of wood chopping for you to do. What a generous offer. And you will never be short on fruits and vegetables to chop for me either. If you felt like you lost your purpose in life, surely you would find a new purpose. It is not like you to be afraid of losing something after all. Hmm. Not a bad idea, huh, Felix? I thought about it, but maybe there is a path for me in peacetime. I'm intrigued. I might even like to realize this fantasy of yours. Oh, that brings me such joy, Felix. Together, we can make this a reality. I can see it now. A life where you slice vegetables rather than people. I will greatly enjoy the day when we inhabit a world like that. C country and continent, yeah, but not world. Okay, Ash has quite a few, actually. Well, let's get started. Excuse me, Ash. Do you have a moment? I finally managed to finish cooking a dish, and I would love for you to have a taste. Sounds good. I'd be happy to. Oh, Mercedes, this is delicious. I used that herb you suggested. Boiling it gave off such a lovely aroma. I think I used the right amount of spice, too. Even I could eat it without burning my tongue. I'm a much better cook now, thanks to you. I hope you can continue teaching me. Oh, definitely. I should thank you, too. Thank me? Even after all the trouble I've caused you? Seeing you persevere has made me really happy. In fact, you've reminded me of someone I cared about a lot. Oh, someone you cared about romantically? This is all so sudden, Ash. I, I don't... Uh, I, I didn't mean it that way. I was actually thinking about my brother. <sighs> what a relief. I didn't even know you had a brother. He was the I mean, son you had family. of my adoptive father. I always called him my brother, though. Failure never got to him. All he'd ever do is laugh and try again. Whenever I was feeling down about a setback, he would cheer me up. He'd say something like, Don't worry, we'll tackle it together next time. I was always happy to have him around. He's 
sounds like a wonderful person. He was. And I get the same feeling from you. I've done nothing but bother you with frivolous little things. I'm sure I could never be like your brother. But I'd like to stay by your side. If you'll have me. What do you mean? I want Plus, she wants you. you. Times of need or to cheer you up when you're feeling down. I should be able to manage that without doing too much damage. I'm glad to hear you say that. Thank you, Mercedes. I know I can rely on you. Okay, Gilbert and then Happy with Ash, that's it. Excellent. Well done, Ash. Continue such work, and you will certainly make a name for yourself. You think so? Thank you, Gilbert. You really are amazing, you know. Your skills with the lance and bow are just incredible. One Aren't you better at him in both of those regards? After 40 years of service. Wow. 40 years? That's incredible. With that many years of training, I'd be really strong, wouldn't I? Further training and service will only make you stronger. Yet, why spend your life this way? Knighthood is not glamorous. On long campaigns, you sleep rough in all manner of weather. And may eat gruel more often than venison. It seems odd that you would admire me. Or that you would long to be a knight. Are you sure of yourself? But of course! It's been my dream for a long time now. I really can't help but admire you. Your years of knighthood are so impressive. I do not deserve your praise. I merely performed my duties to the best of my skill. Don't be modest. You're a great knight. That is a class and he can become it. I'd be very happy to learn. Hmm. Tell me this. Once you don the armor, Raise your shield and level your lance. Why? What is it you wish to protect? Protect? I... Uh, well, whatever needs protecting, right? You must know exactly what you protect before you become a knight. I understand. I'll take that to heart. What is it that you want to protect, if I may ask? My duty has always been to protect my lord. That is a given for any knight. For myself, doubly so. Then there are the personal reasons. Each knight has their own. Yet mine, I do not speak of. Oh. How come? Because it is personal. Mine. It allows me to focus on the work and grants me discipline. That is sufficient. Discipline, huh. Something to protect. I'll have to think of something. Your daughter? You're, you're technically A rank with that, I think. Is he? Yeah, he's missing one thing with that. Okay, Happy and him are next. I've been looking everywhere for you. What's going on? Something urgent? Oh, no. <laughs> but I promised to tell you the rest of the Luna Knight's tale, remember? Huh. That was years ago, wasn't it? You have a good memory. If you really want to tell the story that badly, I guess you just go ahead. Okay, I will. Do you remember where I left off? Uh, give me a hot second. Well, you you got my phone. About how the Luna Knight was hard on liars and cheaters. Right. So her husband, Duke Regan, turned out to be a bit of a libertine. <laughs> That's hilarious. My favorite part was when she caught her husband Whoa. in the act. I thought tales about knights were supposed to be straight-laced, but this one's raunchy as heck. I'm uh, glad you enjoyed it. Usually these tales are pretty serious. Sometimes in a serious story, you need lighter moments like that to connect to the characters. It helps to see that even these great heroes made mistakes now and again. Just like us. You're so trusting, Freckles. For some reason, I find it endearing. But you shouldn't take I love bath and fine endearing. Because it's written down. The truth is, knights do plenty of things that aren't heroic at all. Things that hurt people. You're not wrong. Some knights do terrible things. That doesn't make the great ones any less worthy of honor, though. What about knights who have died taking a stand against the church? Would you call them great? 
That's complicated. Not necessarily. The knights who put me in abyss, promising to release me from my curse. When they couldn't, they left me there out of fear for what I might do. Does that sound honorable to you? Happy. So sorry. Sorry. I can't help but say nasty things. Got any more stories for me? Maybe another racy one? Uh, yes, actually. I came prepared with the most uh, racy ones I could find. In case you happen to ask. I, I am really tempted to look up what that word means. Because I feel like it's an actual word, but I feel like it's more slang than it is word. Okay, Annette only has one, or Annette, that's Mercedes. Mercedes only has one of Ignaz. Are you concerned about something? A little. I'm coming to accept that I will never be an artist. I'm self-taught, so my style and technique are probably all wrong. I don't know what I'm doing. Besides, how could I persuade my father? I can't even imagine his reaction. He disowned me. It takes courage to stray from the path that has been set out for you. It's never easy. I'm in a similar position. I've been carrying out my adoptive father's wishes up until this point. But... Yeah. But? I need to do stuff, and it's weird. Dreams. That's how I feel, at least. I can't imagine a life in which I've given up on my dreams. How could anyone find happiness in that? Even with your father's demands, you can still work toward one small dream at a time. That is true. I suppose you're right. My dream of being an artist gives me the energy to go on. You're really wise, Mercedes. Oh, goodness. That's not how most people would describe me. I just don't want you to give up on your art. Besides, I genuinely do want to see your painting of the goddess. Really? I'm pleased to hear you say so. You I get on it, Ignatz. What did you mean by that? My future has been decided for me as well. I'm to be married off to a nobleman. What? Is it really that surprising? I think many young women face the same fate. So, um, will you get married? Hmm. I suppose I haven't given it much thought. Yes, you freaking have. I'm sure everything will work out in the end if I don't give up on my dreams. Everything will work out in the end. Mercedes, you're amazing. I think that whatever you do, wherever you go, you'll help a lot of people. You're so kind. I know you can... Oh. What's wrong, Ignatz? You have a strange look on your face. For my whole life, I've wanted to paint the goddess, but I never could. Whatever shape I gave her, she never seemed quite right. But it's just come to me. It's wonderful how inspiration can strike so suddenly. Quick, paint before you lose it. I will. Will you help me? I'd be happy as a model. To, but I'm not sure what I can do. Don't you see? The goddess I imagined and tried to paint so many times. She's you. I have to get my supplies. They right there. Well, to say such a thing directly before the altar, that must be some kind of sin. Anything's a sin. Anything's a freaking sin. You freaking put anyone on anything, you're good. Okay. Well, we got Hanneman for uh, Marianne. Miss Mary, hello. Uh, do pardon me, miss. Please have a seat. Of course. Yeah. I have been puzzling over why your father would wish to conceal your crest. And I have arrived at a conclusion. Would you like to hear it? No, I... I mean, I'm pretty sure she's fully aware of what's going on, Hannah, man. Fair enough. Then I will keep it to myself. However, if my theory is correct... Well, then it is only natural for you and your father to try keeping your crest a secret. That said, I feel I would be remiss if I didn't point out that I consider this decision a most grievous error. I'm not sure what you mean. 
crests never manifest in someone unfit to bear them. Which means, Miss Marianne, you have the ability to make the most of your crest, because it is, by definition, your crest. I have no desire to make use of my crest. But it can be of service to you, and I would venture to suggest to the world at large. Ever since I was born, that crest has been nothing but a burden to me. My parents, too. Ah, that's right. I have heard that you were adopted. Did one of your birth parents also have that crest? Uh, yes, it was my father. Then that okay. crest is evidence that you are your true father's daughter. Concealing it, hiding that truth from the world, is denying your true parentage, is it not? I don't. I'm not suggesting you flaunt your crest. That would be highly unnecessary, possibly even dangerous. I simply wish you to accept who you are. Accept it? I mean, you can do that, can't you? Accept the crest and allow its power to come forward. Then it will open itself to you. Whatever the crest may be, whatever its origin or its nature, it can serve you. It is yours to command, however you wish. Mine? You want to be a good thing, it can be a good thing. You want to be a bad thing, it can be a bad thing. You can decide how to use your crest, Miss Marianne. That choice is yours alone. I will... Uh, I will think about that. Okay, Dorothea. Okay, it's Dorothea in year, so we don't have to do that one. Okay, Flane and Sedif. I'm gonna be quiet for this one because I want you guys to actually enjoy this one. And trust me, this is gonna hit you hard. Hit me hard the first time. Flane. Here to pester me, brother? No, I think I'm the one who ought to be pestered. Regardless of what I say to you, it is not as though it has any effect in reducing your worry over me. That is true. No matter where you are, and no matter what you're doing, I will always worry. But that's only because I treasure you so very much. Please understand, I'm not trying to hurt you. Of that I am well aware. I am touched that you care so deeply. When I think of it, it is my own fault that you have become so overprotective. I cannot blame you. No, the fault is entirely mine. You were still so young. I placed far too much strain on you, and our lack of resources was no excuse. Worse, I failed to watch you during the battle. Your mother, too. We lost her because of me. Afterward, it broke my heart to see how much you would need to rest just to survive. I swore that I would dedicate every moment remaining in my life to your protection. Ever since then, I have been afraid of falling asleep. My fear of sleeping is outmatched only by my fear of spending my life alone. Even if it cannot last, I want to live among my peers as one of them. As an ordinary person. Similar to how you and Mother coexisted with your own comrades back then. Fighting side by side. Quite right. I know you must leave the nest someday. No matter how many ages our lives may span, I know that's the way of it. Father... Don't. Nobody is listening, Father. Let me address you as such just this once. I have valued the quiet days you and I have spent alone together. But I am no longer a child. Just as you and Mother met one another, and eventually I was brought into the world, I... I know. Please, no more. No matter what happens, you are my daughter. It gives me great joy to see you grow. But please, at least until this war is over, let me continue to worry. You're the most precious person in my life. I can't bear the thought of losing you. It seems I have no choice in the matter. I shall allow you to worry about me enough for yourself and Mother both. But only that much and no more, my dear Father Keyhole. Thank you, Sethlin. 
I didn't get that until my third playthrough of this game. That blew my freaking mind. But considering everything, I'm going to stop recording this episode so you guys could process that and get ready for the mission of chapter 14. I'll see you guys later.